we have I was doing real good on the internet and I lost the connection but I got it here in, in print anyway um, computers we've heard this uh, all the appropriate times to vote on today and uh, if you would like I can read into the record the change to commission policy number 51 that we're going to be voting on today you like me to read it into the record uh, changes um, sure the changes to us the purpose to establish a policy for the administration of the Commission lifetime commitment to wildlife award one the wildlife commissions is presented annually to bes the, the wildlife commissions lifetime commitment to wildlife award is presented annually to bestow a richly deserved honor on the individual nonprofit organization outdoor sports club or business that has shown outstanding achievement and significant results in the conservation management or enhancement of wildlife in the state of Nevada three board of wildlife commissioners to be named by the chairman will be represented on the award committee uh, number two uh, nomination schedule nominations for the award will be, pr be printed each August and mailed out September 1st to all county advisory boards to manage wildlife the agency's established sportsman's directory list the wildlife commissioners and all agency offices a press release to announce the award will be sent out statewide Nominations will be accepted until November 15th of the current year at 5 p.m. and judges will receive nominations for review by December 1st. Three, the judging panel. The recipient will be selected by a judging panel made up of three wildlife commissioners. The award will be presented to the selected candidate at the next wildlife commission meeting held closest to the recipient's home or at another commission meeting agreed to by the recipient. Judging criteria, that's number four. Selection of the award winner will be made solely from the official award nomination form. The following criteria will be considered in evaluating nominees. Time and depth of commitment to conservation, management, or enhancement of wildlife in the state of Nevada. B, influence of the person project on the public and in presenting positive public relations in regard to wildlife enhancement in Nevada. C, quantity and quality of measurable results for wildlife enhancement. D, obstacles difficulties and personal sacrifice involved in meeting wildlife enhancement goals five type of award the perpetual award is a plaque clarification made out of wood and bronze <laughs> to which each year's recipient's name will be added the perpetual award is permanently installed in the lobby of the reno office in addition each annual recipient will receive a smaller version to commemorate the award. Six, publicity. An announcement of the availability of nomination forms will be made each September. A statewide press release acknowledging the award recipient and their contributions on behalf of wildlife enhancement will be prepared and sent out after the announcement of the award. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, when it pleases, I'm ready to make a motion. Okay, we'll have a few things um, there, and I'd just like to throw a couple things out in that motion. One is that, of course, we'd need to change the ending, the dates, and all that at the end. I beg your pardon? Uh, just, you know, we'd have to change the ending after you finished writing there about by order wildlife commissioners on the dates and chairman and all that stuff. 
And I'd just like to point out that this is as presented other than under paragraph number one under policy, it added in the words after the wildlife commissions and that actually it's it starts the wildlife commissions then it added in lifetime commitment to wildlife and then continued as it was those words lifetime commitment to wildlife weren't in the um, draft that was given out but as I was mentioned by legal counsel it's a clarification and probably a good thing to add that in there because it is simply a clarification of what award so at this point in time, I'd like to have public hearing on the matter. We've got uh, Greg Smith had a card with this on it. I've got one and that says agenda items. All right, we need to have the, uh, Gre all right. And then Greg Smith followed by Gil Yannick. <coughs> Daryl Harwell, Washoe County. What policy number were you reading? Policy 51. Okay, policy 51 is Wayne Kirch Award. And Washoe County believes that you should not do anything to the Way Rich Award. Leave it as it is. I mean, commissioners, before you came up with this award, and now you're defacing it. That policy that you read, this Lifetime Achievement Award, is a, uh, is a wonderful award, and you should continue with it under a different policy number. Washoe County makes a recommendation that you do nothing to policy 51, leave it as it is, an intimate policy, whatever, for your Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you. Greg Smith, followed by Gil Yannick. Gil has abandoned us. This is the first time ever. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Greg Smith, um, NBU once again. Um, we would like to offer testimony in opposition to the proposed changes to policy 51. We should say that the Wayne Kirsch Conservation Award has a long history of honored recipients, and it would be a dishonor to eliminate the Conservation Award in lieu of a lifetime commitment award. The elimination of Endow and Marlene Kirsch from the award selection process will essentially make the award a popularity contest for select members of the commission on the committee. The commission needs to work out its issues with Ms. Kirsch has raised rather than scrap this prestigious award. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have, ah, Jim. Jim Jenny. Mr. Janae, how's life? Ah, uh, it's great. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether I'm speaking for myself or Lyon County. We went through this a couple of months ago. This month we didn't have a meeting, so I'm going to say I'm speaking for myself right now the I read through everything that came in from the counties there was not one that was in favor of getting rid of policy 51 they, every county game board that I saw that remarked to you said leave policy 51 alone I agree policy 51 is good it need maybe need some changes to go to where we want to go with it I have talked to Marlene on it, and she agreed to work with me on anything I wanted to come up with. The policy you've got here, I think, is very good. I think if you change your policy number to the next policy number that's effective, and I've been told it might be 52, I think we could have two good awards, and there's not a thing wrong with giving another award to the people of the state of Nevada that want to get out and work for wildlife. That's what we're here for. Thank you. All right, thank you. Further public comment? We had lots of cards with no recs. Hi there. Welcome back. Yes. You have a permit seat. <coughs> Rex Flowers, representing myself. Um, just a little n note here. You have this item 20 listed, and it says that this uh, new commission policy was held at the March 11th and 12th with first and second readings. I believe it was only read once, and that was on Saturday, because I gave public comment at that time, and the public comment was the same as what you're hearing today, that there were so many changes, and with the prestige of the Wayne Kirsch Award, that policy 51 should stay in place. And I said at that time in March that 
this should be referred back to the administrative procedures and policies committee and be given a new number not against having a commission lifetime commitment to a wildlife award it's just it should be given its own number separate um, I feel that we're taking away from all those individuals who in the past have received the Wayne Kirsch award by eliminating 51 and those people they did a great service for this state and, and I don't think we should slight them or the Kirsch family in that matter thank you thank you for the public comment I'm um, seeing none. We'll close public hearing on this matter. Bring it back to the commission. Um, you didn't take poll comments, Scott. Ah, you're right. For, for the first time, I've forgotten about the phone. We have Elko on the line. No comment from Elko. And we have Mr. Dixon on the line in Las Vegas. Uh, Paul Dixon, Clark County Cap, for the record. Uh, I'll be speaking. Uh, as an individual here, uh, you can you guys have my uh, action reform report. Uh, I, I would like to, to say personally, I feel that Commission Policy 51 should remain the Wayne Kirsch Award because it signifies something. And I also very much support the uh, Commission Lifetime Award thing that Charlie Howe put together. I think Commissioner Howe put together. I think having those two awards would mean a lot. And I, I don't think that we need to lose the Marlene Kirsch, by lose the, the Kirsch Award because <clears throat> certain commissioners are having a disagreement with Marlene Kirsch. I think that that needs to be retained. And I think that the new policy, I like, I like it because rather than what somebody's done in the last year, it's a lifetime achievement. And I think that we should recognize some people in the state for their lifetime of achievement that's been done. And there have been some people that have done some great things over their lifetime for the state. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no one further public comment in Las Vegas? All right, seeing none, we'll now close public hearing on the matter. Bring it back to the commission. Um, I would like to first state that, you know, I mean, I don't know how s some of these comments are a little bit confusing to me because it is not this commission that is getting rid of the, well, the, Mar the Kirch Award in so much as while we are enacting this policy change, if this indeed passes, this is at the express, written, multiple-time request of Marlene Kirch. That is what we are doing. And it is written writing, how many times do we have? At least three? At least three times in writing from her. In writing. And that is the reason for eliminating this award. And due to legal advice in that if a private individual has control over a public award, that award must go away. Because as it was, it was being, it had issues, severe issues. And fortunately those have come out this year and we've received our advice from it and we've, we're now uh, at this point we're at right now. Mr. Chairman. Go, uh, go ahead. What? I haven't seen any of this legal advice. What, what it was exactly stated to us a um, couple meetings ago. I believe if a public award is controlled by a private individual, it must go away, was as it was stated. Is that from Mr. By Stockton? By Mr. Stockton, yeah. And we, talk, we talked about it because when, back when we came out that we were being dictated to by a private party saying, you must do this and you must do that as one of the judges in this. And that's what happened. Which meeting was it? The meeting, the, uh, it must have been December. He's, he's the, the one you, yeah. I don't think it must have been the December meeting. One where we, where we had the... Um, we, we had the letters on it. And all the letters, that was December? Look at the date on your letters. We have several from the news that made. Anyways, it was, at, it was at that point in time. I don't because recall it, that in the public forum. That may have been... And it was repeated at least two. a couple times. I know I repeated it. Mr. Chairman, if nobody I, else did, I, I know. Believe it's that, 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 no, go ahead. I Mr. believe Trump? that Vice Chairman uh, Lint even read her letters into yeah. the into the minutes. I did read. I'm it. sorry, you're yeah. unintelligible, Commissioner Schwab. Thank you. Please uh, speak uh, to the microphone. Yes, I, I'll repeat that. I believe that uh, Vice Chairman Lint read the letters from uh, from Miss Kirch into the uh, into the minutes. 
and it, they're all dated. So all you have to do is just go back and, and look at those. And she was quite positive in what she wanted. Absolutely. Um, Commissioner Lent. Mr. Chairman, I, I wasn't going to say much about this, but I've been hearing a lot of comments, and I just heard some comments by Nevada Bighorns Unlimited where they implied that uh, it's a special award for the commissioners, that, and that implies that we as commissioners are biased, and, I, and it's a commission award, and I want you to learn what happened in the past, and uh, how do we know that the NBU, they were recipients, NBU members, many, many times of this award. And it was, uh, there was a lot of, uh, uh, I, I don't know the right word, uh, I might use the wrong word, but there's a lot of corruption in the way it was done before. Because I hadn't even voted, and uh, Marlene Kurtz had the results in her hand, and she was protesting them. And the staff member, Kim Talese hadn't voted and I hadn't voted and she knew the results. And so the results have always been leaked out ahead of time before anyone voted. There was no control over the votes and who opened the ballots and stuff. So how Vice do we know Chair? this thing wasn't set up years ago? And I this, just have a problem with that. This is something that came up uh, earlier. Do you have an I, issue? I, yeah, I just want to remind the commission that um, there is a, um, you are required to give special notice if you are criticizing the character of someone. Even the public? Who are we You are um, specifically naming names. Okay, I'll take the name away. But in the past, and I was this is the first time that I was a judge, and I saw really something that happened. And, and the way the votes were cast on that, it was a disgrace. And so, and I resent anybody saying the commissioners can't be unbiased and read the applicants and, and made, a, made a good decision, because you ought to see how decisions were made in the past on who got who the recipients were and so I just I wasn't going to say that but when I heard testimony with this I just had to bring this up and and I don't think any of the cabs ever got involved in the voting before knew how the ballots were cast and if they would I don't think they would say that but the commissioners did an unbiased and uh, and they did the best they could and there's there's some good applicants on there and uh, they just or didn't like who got the award and uh, the uh, a lot of people didn't like who got the word award and it didn't go out to certain groups and sorry the only issue reason this is an issue and i think it was best characterized by uh, a legal staff at one point i don't know that it was in a public meeting but hey this is a beauty contest these guys don't like this candidate miss because miss merrick has a mole on her left cheek this is a beauty contest this is not anything beyond that as far as the way judging is done, you don't like the way one judge's results are. Hey, it's a commission award. It should belong with the commission. That's just the simple way it is. And you know one thing about it? All things change in time. It's gone back one direction. It'll go another way. This is not in any way besmirching, besmirching the Wayne E. Kirch Award to replace it with a different award, doing that at a specific request. You know, we could have gone ahead and said, hey, let's just keep using um, Kirch's name, despite the fact that uh, Mrs. Kirch wanted it off. We could have done that. Chose not to, because it's in her name. She specifically requested that in writing on multiple occasions. It's been read into the record previously. Um, Daryl Capurro, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, of the cabs that reported on this issue, Eureka had no, ne no recommendation. Douglas County had no position taken on it. Uh, Elko County showed in their um, in their um, templates showed a little confusing. It says they marked in support of the proposed changes, but then the motion to support uh, <coughs> was with removal of item three, the three judge panel. So I don't know whether they approved the other changes or what the situation was, but uh, also uh, there was, uh, well, that was that was of the ones I have that either took no position or supported the proposed change. I'm reading all those. Okay. Excellent. So, where are we? Commissioner Howell, go ahead. Mr. Mr. Chairman, 
Yeah. Are we ready for a motion? I, I'm sure. And we'll, we'll you know, he has one a one comment one. first, and then we'll have a motion. One comment, Commissioner I, I, Wallace. I have a letter here that was addressed to Commissioner Howell from Miss Kirsch. Did he did he ever receive that? From Marlene? Yes. A couple of them. Two, three. Okay, because it, it right here it says. In the middle of it says, I believe that my father would be very proud to have his name continued on the award if, in fact, a more equitable judging panel and process could be resumed. If that cannot be re remedied, perhaps you and the commission should, in fact, remove his name from the award. But what I get from that is if that... I don't know. I, I don't know what else to say. You, you, there's a remedy to it, and nobody seems to want to look at it. What was the date on that? That was March 3rd, 2011. Okay. That was one of her later award one letters. But you talk about the letters. I just want to make yeah. sure that they were all included because you want to bring up three. We we, we read them into the record the last time. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to find all the information. I'm still looking for the information on the legal advice that I can't seem to find either. So I just wish that just, just one comment here. I wish that we could just make this a different policy number and revisit this in the future. I mean, we don't have to continue to award it just because it's a policy. If she doesn't want it awarded, she doesn't want it awarded, but at least let's leave it on the books for the, for the trophy that's in the hallway so that there's not just a trophy in the hallway for no particular reason. And well, that's, that's, that's my opinion. The trophy in the hallway is never going away. It's going yeah, to be there no, forever. There's, no, there's nothing to go along with it. You're, you're completely changing it. And destroying what it means I mean it, it's just gonna be a trophy on the wall and that's what these people are trying to tell us and nobody's wanting to listen so I just want to put that out there thank you go ahead Michelle. I move that we um, adopt the changes to uh, policy number 51 as presented as you presented second okay. All right, and I'm assuming that this will ha include um, all the changes and appropriate dates at the beginning and the end and such so stuff. What's the language that you Yeah, and the language yeah. that he read into it, which was on, on line one under policy. Is that correct, Mr. Maker, the that's motion? That's correct. Okay. He said that's correct. And we had a second. Who seconded it? I, I missed Okay, the vice chairman seconded the motion. Everybody understand the motion. We have an uh, amendment, I assume, motion or discussion. To motion to amend. Uh, I move that we accept the commission policy as written, with the exception of changing it to commission policy 52, if that is not a taken policy number. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. All right, there is a motion to amend the main motion, so that the ma main motion would then be... I'm trying to think, I don't think there's a 52, is there? Just okay. So the main motion would then read exactly as the original motion, but 52 as opposed to 51. And we'd have two awards. Does everybody understand the amendment to the motion? All in favor of the amendment to the motion signify by raising your hand. Uh, on the phone? Um, yes. Yeah, it's a yes. Voting yes for the amendment. Yes on the phone. Opposed to the motion. Okay. Motion fails. Three to four. Commissioner Cavan, Wallace, Macbeth in favor. Other four opposed. All right. We're back to the main motion. That is to approve it as uh, presented with the uh, one change as mentioned by Commissioner Howell previously. The original motion. All in favor of the original motion, signify by raising your hand. Uh, all opposed. And on on the phone? No. No. Motion passes 4-2-3, opposite of the last vote. Is that clear for the recording secretary? Okay. And let's move right along. Always lots of good points. Let's see. Back to some informational items. Voting is easier on informational items. 
Administrative Procedures, Regulations, and Policies Committee. Commissioner Lent, informational. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on Policy 10, uh, we made it, we added a, as you can see, we added line five, and it says big game heritage tags are non transferable from the uh, successful bidder unless approved by the commission. And uh, that was, we had some input from one of the cabs, and basically that was put in there uh, because if uh, somebody did the tag and wanted to give it to his son, then uh, I don't. Uh, I don't see where the commission would ever turn that down, but this is to prevent a black market or scalping of the tag, reselling it, and then uh, also, and I might ask the attorney general here a question. He hasn't, he hasn't been kind of quiet, but basically uh, we should change the, and I don't know if we can do that, the CR, the commission regulation, and CR 11-06, and basically it, it says on the second page when we set the heritage and the silver state tags for 2012 uh, the special regulation reach tag it says the organization shall submit the full amount of the bid as well as the name of the desert hunter to the department of wildlife no later than 30 days after the auction is held and we should probably put that down to five days or ten days or something like that because when somebody bids for it it gives them a month to resell the tag. Where are you? Where are you? On um, that's uh, that's all, all. That's what we're discussing. This is what was discussed at the committee meeting. Right. Okay. So basically, we're on a committee report right now. There would be no action on this. We're just kind of on a report, and anything that's done of that nature would have to be done at a future meeting, regardless. Okay. So, because it's not, it wouldn't be part of policy, but yeah. it was something that came up at the committee meeting. We'd have to see if we're going to do it. And basically, okay. it was because uh, we had a tag this year that was bought, and I don't know who bought it, but uh, who paid for it anyway. I don't know who paid for it, but it was uh, resold, and there was a profit of $28,000 or something like that made on it. And that's not the purpose of uh, their hitters' tags for somebody to turn on, resell them, and make money on it. And uh, so, and uh, I, when I went to the Wild Sheep Foundation, uh, almost all their hunts and that, they say these are non-transferable. And a lot of the other states have that in their language. So whoever bids on it, it gets a tag so they can't resell it and scalp it and make some money off of it. And that was the reason we put that in there and, and uh, with the policy committee. Okay, let me just clarify that. So that's why that line number five is in there. But then if we're doing that, we should also deal with it in in, 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 in the regulation. Right. This would lead us to, to change the regulation at a later time. Okay, I'm gathering it now. <laughs> See what he's talking about? <laughs> is this maybe not transferable? This, this is all we're going to do. I have the. It's another day. Yeah. Okay, so that's that one. That's on A. And let's talk about A. Does anybody have any on the commission have any issues with with these changes? Would like to discuss them? I and mean, this is just a first reading. Do you have any suggestion and wording changes? Now's a good time for it. It's pretty simple because you're just adding one line in there, simply adding five, changing the dates and such. Did that was want, it, did right? Did you want to discuss A and B at the same time or just one at a time? I think we're almost done with A. We'll be done with A in 2.3 seconds here. Uh, Mr. McBeth, any question on that? <clears throat> okay, well, you're talking about policy 10? Uh, 10, yes. Um, I think, I definitely think that we need a regulation that deals with uh, how these tags can be transferred. Um, I do have a problem with the way this is written in the policy uh, because I think you can have situations, legitimate situations, where people are buying a tag for somebody else. Um, you know, if somebody's bidding on a tag and buying it for their son, for instance. 
Uh, I don't have any heartburn about that, and that's a transfer without any consideration. Um, uh, but I can certainly see where there can be some uh, issues with, uh, you know, somebody uh, buying one of these tags and then turning around and trying to sell it. And, uh, you know, and now, now we have a tag where the funds are not coming back to the state. Uh, I do have a big problem with that. So do you have some suggested language changes then maybe for that line five? Something we can throw in here to give us another option later on? Um, yeah, I can think of some you know, alternative language. I don't know if I can do it right now. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, basically, we're this is our first reading. At the second reading, we c could also propose changes just when we get to the final. We've had quite a while on this to go over it. Second reading would be next meeting. Second meet. Well, the second reading, and then we'll have the adoption. Right. So let's just. Keep that in mind, but right now it's this is generally non-transferable from the successful bidder unless approved by the commission. I'm trying to think of something to cover that that exact situation that Mr. Macbeth I mean, is referring to here. The, Mr. Mr. Chairman, yeah, we did have that problem with an elk tag a few years back. <coughs> it was resold at a profit, so this is not the first instance when we had that. We had it happen with an elk tag. So I just like that question. Okay, I come in to bid on a tag because I want to give it to um, my good uh, friend Joe over here. Now, it's ba while I am the successful bidder, I'm giving the tag to him in his name, but it's done in his name. I'm just trying to think that out, how that works with this wording, or if there's superior wording. Maybe it can't be resold or something like that. Uh, we could work on some other wording, but uh, well, maybe now's time. Yeah, right, right. Macbeth might come Commissioner up with Capurro? an answer. <coughs> I think the intent, although I didn't work on this, but I think the intent of saying unless approved by the commission was a kind of a catch-all to say that if you had a circumstance like that where you had a man who wanted to give the tag to his son or whatever the situation might be. That the out is that it would that was okay if it was approved by the commission. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is is if you're not meeting, you know there are months, when, there are times when we don't meet for what at least two months, and that could interfere with the season, depending upon when it might be auctioned. So perhaps we could find something that's a little more. I don't think anybody has any problem with the idea that you shouldn't retransfer that uh, that uh, tag for a profit that doesn't end up with the department. Mr. Chairman, uh, go ahead, Ken Mayor. For the record, the, the way it works right now, we have flexibility. If a person wins the bid, he has 30 days to put the hunter's name on the tag, and that's in there. So you might decide you want to send your wife or your kid or at the last moment you want to do it. And I think that's a good thing. I think what you're talking about here is that someone would, would purchase the tag and put it on eBay. you got 30 days to try to make as much money as they can on it, then put the hunter's name on before the 30-day right. date is. Mm -hmm. So I, I think maybe it's really about being resold, if that's, if that's your intent. L leave the flexibility to put a hunter's name on it. But uh, I, think, I think then under that circumstance, what you'd be best off doing is reducing the 30 days down to yeah. five or ten right. days, so he doesn't have I, that I've opportunity. I actually talked to a number of people about that. That's when they're they're the high rollers that are buying these things. Oftentimes, are calling in on a phone, um, and that would put a hardship on, you know, making that. But if you said you couldn't sell or barter, uh, resell or bar barter the tag uh, after after initial purchase, that would resolve it. Then then have their 30 days to put the name on. Question: Maybe you or law enforcement asking. No, right now, I have a tag. I can't resell my deer tag that I'm going to get. My uh, mountain goat tag that I'm going to get this year. Excuse me. I got to be. I guess <laughs> think high. Um, I can't resell it because it's got my name on it. Is it, there's got to be a regulation somewhere that right. governs that? It's been issued to you because you want it. You you drew it. Yeah. In this particular case, they sold it. Okay, so it's been sold. 
but the name of the individual that's actually going to go on the tag hasn't been put there. Now, let's say five days goes by and you put your son's tag on it, yeah. and he broke his arm, and you go, oh, he's not going to be able to go. I need to put my name on it. You wouldn't be able to change it at yeah. that point. It's not transferable once you put somebody's name on the tag. So how can we do that? I mean, this is very close. This is really close, but what about wording may not be resold right. unless approved by the commission? Or bartered. May not be resold, bartered, or traded. Yeah. Legal, do you have like another six words for resold, bartered, and traded for me? <laughs> I think you hit the mark on all three of those. Big game heritage tags may not be resold, bartered, or traded by the original... Is traded the right word? By the successful bidder. By the successful bidder. What paragraph are you look, looking at? The only change, five, which is five. five. Five is the only change. Uh, big game uh, heritage cannot be resold, bartered, or traded from the successful bidder. And you want to leave unless approved by the commission off? Yeah. Well... That's a kit. Why would leave, you, leave why it on would there. you approve Let's leave, doing that? We could leave it on there in case there's some yeah. weird deal. Yeah, in case. It, but when no, Marine, there's some weird deal that I can't think of today. Staff was here, Maureen, and she said that the only thing it would affect going through the dates when we have our commission meetings would be turkeys. Right. That's the only thing that would be affected. And when she is at the meeting, because went through all the dates, when the, when the tags are issued, when the, we have commission meetings, and uh, the only thing to be affected would be the turkeys. All right, so as the current suggestion would be is five, as an option on five, we sh then we should probably at the next meeting, uh, we have the second reading, have two versions of five, one being as it's currently in there, as presented to us, the next one would be big game heritage tags may not be resold, bartered, or traded, by and then continue with the successful bidder unless approved by the commission. And we'll and we could get that as an option then, yeah. and then we could decide which is the best wording on there. All right. And I had a question on a, a commission a CR commission regulation. Can we uh, let's talk to the director? Can we change that now, or we got to wait till next February? You got to wait. We gotta wait till next February. But if this was a policy, then we could use this policy right. to, to change the CR, right. saying we had a new policy, so we'd want to change the CR and we'd want to make sure we didn't forget it. Because it's always the second page, and when we said heritage, we never look at the second page of the rules here. Right. That this would be our guidance to develop the CR. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. All right. Any uh, how'd that go, Commissioner McBeth? Um, as long as uh, as long as we can also um, propose additional changes to the language, I'm fine. Yeah, we'll have a second reading at the next meeting. We'll have a second reading. I guess we'll plan on one day and then a final reading the following day. So as long as we get the additional changes in the second reading, at the final changes can only be um, not substantive. I believe it's just substantive is a, I believe is the term that was told to me. Okay. Uh, so second reading we can, last reading no, and next meeting we'd have one one day and one the next day. All right, Chairman Reigns. Yes, go ahead. This is Paul Dixon. I just have a, a, a point of clarification: is is how you're running your agenda going forward now? Is that first readings of policies and procedures will not require any public input, and you'll only require public input upon second reading? Yeah, you know, what on action items that is. It will be when it's an action item. If you have any public input, remember, there's a, several formats for public input. One of which is, is if cabs could have very well vote on it and send that forward in writing, they can always talk about it at the public comment portion, at the cab portion of the meeting. Committee. And the committee, yeah, actually it begins at the committee meeting. They could have it at the committee meeting. They could have it in public comment. They can have it in the cab portion. And then they also have in writing at any point in time before the first reading, second reading, and then, of course, at the action item of the final reading. So that's like uh, six, then, six or eight opportunities. One last small point of clarification, and I apologize. All right, we, we're, we're really at the commission level right now, so if you got anything else, 
we got to we got to keep this at the commission level. Go ahead, Commissioner Pearl. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This this first reading, this word first reading, so it acts much like the legislative uh, session is in which a bill is introduced. It's given its first reading the first time it comes to the floor. It is then submitted to a commission committee for action. Comes back to the floor for second reading. The second reading in our case will take place the next month uh, on the first day and the third reading, which is the same as the legislature operates under, is final passage on the final day. So this is an information item today and not an action item. And so therefore there is no public input as far as I'm aware. Except for the committee meeting, they could have done it in writing at the cab portion or at the public comment period. It's simply to make them aware yeah. that this is uh, going to be changed. But at those points in time, we're most certainly going to take input on it. Absolutely. At least four times already. Okay. So, and then we'll have more. next. Both days next meeting, there will be opportunity. So, anything else on this? Let's move right along to B, which is first reading of proposed changes to policy number 50, duck stamp procedure. And what do we have here? Okay, Mr. Chairman. Um, we have, uh, we made some changes, and we still have to make some additional changes in that. Uh, basically, uh, uh, we have some changes in the number one, the judging team. Instead of seven volunteers, we have five individuals, consisting of three members of the Board of Wildlife Commission, two individuals with expertise in one or more of the following. And... Uh, we don't set qualifications for expertise, so it's a little bit up in the air, you know, who, who's an expert and who isn't. Everyone wants to be an expert, you know. And uh, then we uh, added uh, a number four. No judge will have any interest or contact with any of the entrants at any time prior to the judging, which uh, uh, I think is very important to be in there. And... Uh, I wanted to uh, suggest adding another, and I don't know where what number it'd be. I'll, I'll just throw it out here to the commission. But uh, I want to I want to add all entries must be the original work of the artist, and I think we should put that because there was some talk on whether one of the entries in the last duck stamp was really an original or is a reproduction, and no one could tell. Uh, uh, I guess one of the judges says, I, I know reproductions, and this is not an original piece of art. And believe me, some of them are so good, reproductions, and, and even some experts couldn't tell. So I think just to avoid that, uh, make a simple statement, all, the, all entries must be the original work of the artist would be apropos. And uh, that came out after our, after our uh, committee meeting. So... That would probably, we could put it anywhere in there uh, as number four and put this current number four to five, just move everyone down one, I think. But I think that would be good if we could get staff to add that line. F, D, E, F, put it in there. F. Um, we could put that as F maybe. That'd be probably a Five F? Put it under F. And uh, Commissioner oh. Kapur was on the committee, judging committee, and uh, he could talk about that a little bit. And, but F is... F related to the sponsor. Yeah, right, that's, that's not... That's not a yeah, no, it wouldn't be. Sense. Yeah, you're right. That's with the sponsor. Yeah. We would want to put that under F. New, fo new 4, new 5. Well, if you... Whatever. Uh, if you put it as the new 5... That'd leave all the judging together. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Just say so. Put it as a new four or five is probably the most appropriate. Doesn't make any difference whether it's four or five. Okay. You wrote five on your form, so the suggestion is to put five. Right. Got and it. Commissioner Capurro might add something to that because he was one of the judges. Commissioner Capurro? Thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman. It was an honor, actually, for me to, and I have to tell you that. Uh, uh, that was probably the mo most difficult judging job I've ever had because there were so many of them that were 
you know, very close. And uh, we did have the one situation in which it was difficult to tell whether it was a print or whether it was the original work in that. And uh, what we decided was that uh, we didn't want to take a chance. And we did get pretty much unanimity. The advantage of having the type of judging panel that we had, and that was uh, Tom Cavett and I were on that, <coughs> is that because the requirements are written <coughs> into the current policy, the we did have some people who had some art experience in there, and they were able to point out some things that under ordinary circumstances, the untrained eye wouldn't be able to see. I don't know that it's real important to have three commissioners on that uh, body, uh, particularly. I think it is most important to have somebody who can input the art aspects of it so that uh, the judging is is reasonable and uh, and can be done. The other changes that have been suggested are absolutely important. Um, the the original must be the original work of the artist. I think is real important. Another one is the a problem apparently that the wild the uh, waterfowl people have run into in which the screening of the winning. Um, stamp has had to have been paid for the last couple of times by the wild by the um, waterfowl association. That doesn't make sense to me. And there have been some other suggestions made. I think California charges fifty dollars per entrant in this thing. I'm not sure that's the way to go because we had entrants from high school students, and I wouldn't want to preclude them from you know, making their their uh, entrant in, entrance into this uh, type of judging thing. So I'm not sure that charging the entrant for the money is the thing to do. But certainly the, the person who wins, he has a potential for some money-making possibilities on the thing, as well as once they're screened and given out to various uh, NGOs, they, those prints still sell for a fair amount of money. So I think you're going to have to take a look at the potential for requiring that the winning artist provide the screening uh, responsibility for that stamp. And I don't know exactly how to word it, but I would just throw it out that that's one area that should be. Again, going back to the other, I'm not so sure it's all that important to have three commissioners on this judging panel. Uh, it's not easy to get everybody together, quite frankly, in that uh, and it is handy when you have people who, who really have an eye for art uh, on this panel. Oh, good. Uh, Vice Chairman? Yeah, I can add some of those. I, I forgot to add some things. Uh, uh, I had a letter here from Tom Wilson. He presented to the Washer County Board, and it's dated uh, a year ago. And we had a committee meeting, and there was nobody from the Waterfall Association and he made a recognition to send it back to the policy committee. And I said, why? Just because they missed a committee meeting is not a good reason. And then he also said it's not lucrative or else the artist would make the prints because I guess the artist didn't want to make the prints. But yet, in his letter, and I want to read this in, at, as the Nevada Duck Stamp Contest is one of the few remaining duck stamp contest in the United States. As such, the level of competition is high and rewards for the winning artist are exceptionally lucrative. That's not true because if it was lucrative, they'd make the prints. And so, um, and then there's a question of uh, the sponsor said they wanted to be allowed to sell the prints to make dollars for their organization. And I think that's wrong. And then they say, who pays for the prints? They were trying to get Endow to pay the money to do the prints. Well, uh, the I have the uh, the uh, letter that sent out to all of the all of the sponsoring organizations, and it says right in here, the Nevada State Duck Stamp Art Contest rules state that the artist will provide 75 conservation edition prints for distribution to various nonprofit organizations for fundraising events. It, the rules are already there. They have to. The artist has to provide them. And it said the sponsoring organization may choose to utilize some of the donated prints for their own fundraising events. But I think 
we get we don't want to get in a deal where we're letting the sponsor organization uh, sell the prints for their own organization. I think uh, if they want to donate them to different groups and they auction them off for fundraisers, that was the purpose of it. But uh, if the artist thought it was lucrative, he would have made prints on it. And evidently he thought he couldn't make any money. But we have it in here right now that goes out. And uh, why it wasn't followed, I don't know. But it, it's uh, the rules that are given out to all the organizations. So the artist should know that. But uh, sending it back to the policy committee is, I don't think, uh, is an option. And I think who pays for the prints? Uh, the artist pays for the prints. Endow shouldn't pay for the prints because they were trying to get Endow to pay for the prints because he, the, the winning artist didn't want to do it. And uh, and uh, those are very expensive to, to do, and the artists didn't want to do it unless they think they can make a profit. And so it's not a very lucrative deal on duck stamp prints, evidently. And uh, the other thing uh, in here, uh, I think maybe we should add something on, on the Waterfall Association or whoever does the deal, pre-qualify their judges. It says that we have expertise, but how do they... How do they uh, Qualifying their judges, just somebody that's a duck hunter, or just somebody's got experience, but maybe they should pre-qualify him. And uh, then he talked on the rule change here uh, that we had three commissioners on there. He talked about the commission being biased, and uh, I throw that right back up. Uh, how do we know about bias and waterfall association? Who knows uh, all the judges themselves? No, really, I mean. Who knows about the Waterfall Association judges? Are they biased? Everyone is biased, you know? There isn't anyone sitting in this room that's not biased, you know? But you try to do the best you could. But we should probably add as a criteria for expertise, quote, you know, uh, maybe somebody that's uh, bought a duck stamp once in their life or whatever. But we should probably uh, label that there. But uh, we got some rules on who does a print, and if the artist doesn't print them, maybe disqualify the artist. A hey, question, um, Mr. Harwell, you're a member of the Waterfowl Association, right? On this now, come up. On um, how would you think of this work, and how are you gonna? How would the Waterfowl Association bring forth judges? How could they do that? Well, <clears throat> tell me a story. With the uh, judging panels that we have, we have Hugh Judge that runs the duck stamp for us. Um, <clears throat> And when he goes out to pick the judges, like I've been a judge myself. Were you biased? Oh, yes. <laughs> or a member of the Communist Party. <laughs> and then you want to talk about qualification. Yes, I'm, a, I'm the treasurer for Nevada Waterfowl. Been with them for 18 years. I also have a degree in graphic arts. Right. You'd be a good judge. Okay. Uh, normally what we end up trying to do is you can get two judges from the organization out of the five because there's two commissioners, two judges from the organization. Normally, Hugh's there. He picks one of us. I think Chris Nikolai was there. He's your federal biologist for the state, or federal for the state of Nevada and California. We normally have another uh, printing artist or somebody within the graphics or the printing ability. And then we normally try to bring in a conservation organization so they can have a say in the ducks. So as far as it goes, the five judges, I mean, you've got two from Nevada Waterfowl. That's, what are we ju judging? Waterfowl. We brought in a federal biologist, or we'll bring in a biologist as a judge. Then we get a conservation group, you know, Anabod Society, Lahontan. I mean, Tina Nappy's been a judge. And then we normally always try to have somebody in the printing or the graphic screen. Um, but to your policy, and that's the seven made up. And even on your policy back one on page four, I think there's four things that you got to be either an expert, be a water, uh, art expert, a wildlife yeah. art. We got them. Um, the question that Daryl brought up, is like he says, it is in the policy for the artist to do 75 prints. And you are getting to the point that they're not making the money that they used to on these prints. 
but it's kind of a combination with the print and the stamp. There's some people out there buy stamp, they buy the print, they buy the same print, and <clears throat> that needs to be addressed. Who addresses it? Is it the department to the artist? I mean, that is something that needs to be out. To let the record know, Nevada Waterfowl has done it twice I know of, and somebody said three, but twice we have paid for the duck stamp, the 75 that you're talking about. We've paid out of our organization. At the present time, this year duck stamp, there is no print. We have not decided to spend it, and the artist gave us the permission to use it or not use it. We are trying to work on trying to cut the cost between us and DU, but at the present time, there is no prints of this stamp. All right, old Commissioner Pearl. Thank you. My other brother, Daryl, gave a good outline of what has actually happened on this. The problem is, apparently, and I wasn't even aware of this, uh, as far as the artist, the language is already there, that they have to provide it. So somehow or other, it has to be uh, it has to be enforced because I, I think you just don't give him the award if he doesn't uh, provide for the 75 prints. If he doesn't want it, fine. But the simple fact of the matter is it's not fair for the organization, the sponsoring organization, when the rules say that the winner has to pay for them. Because then that brings on another issue in which you come to us wanting to sell those prints so that you can make back the expense that you put out for screening it and that I don't like that either so the the, the point is it needs to be enforced it's uh, it's a Board of Wildlife Commissioner's uh, policy so I guess it falls on us but the fact of the matter is that clearly under the rules that we are now operating under the winning artist has to pay for those 75 prints uh, and uh, if he's you know, in my view, if he's not willing to do that, he shouldn't enter the contest. All right, so I'm going to throw out some um, possibilities for language here. We're, ta we're talking about changing... Wait, Mr. Chairman, one yeah. last okay. thing. One more point. I think, Daryl, what, what the figure is something like twenty eight to hundred to $3,000 is what it costs to do that. Is that right? Yeah, it's not. It's not and, in it, and here again, I think what even Tom said at the Washoe County Board was more of it's the cost of getting the plates for the screening, yeah. not how many yeah. you screen. Yeah, well, it's the plates to do it. Color separation. Right, one thing when I read through this is it doesn't exactly specify who's in charge of picking the judges. You know, and that there should be somewhere in here who the final word is. I, the, I think if you read further on down, it's the the non the nonprofit organization that submits and be a letter to you to be mm -hmm. chosen. They must a provide Dutch, a team. The non-sponsor organization must find the judges. I do believe it, it's up to the non-sponsoring okay. organization to have the judges in place for the judges. A proposal for sponsorship must provide for the following. So it's a proposal by the nonprofit organization. So they are indeed, but and the only portion of that then would be the wildlife commissioner's portion of it that's appointed by the commission, chairman commission. Art experts all, with the exception of myself, possibly. <laughs> possibly there's eight, but there's surely not nine. All right. We'd nonetheless be unbiased, however. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, uh, it's a short period of time before everything's generated electronically include all our stamps and licenses I'm too old to buy a duck stamp anymore but there's gonna be the physical stamp itself is gonna go by the wayside right now you buy a duck stamp when you buy your license you don't get a physical stamp that you lick and stick on the license right one thing that you've made through this commissioner, Mr. Howe, is you can buy electronic stamp. At the end of the year, this commission has made it where you can submit the paperwork after the end of the duck season, which is February, can't do it, 
but February, you can take your electronic stamp, and they will mail you this year's duck stamp. I, I remember that. And you guys but, set it up. How many you, guys do that, though? <laughs> There's two right here. There's two right there. Huh? All right. That's, that's, an, that's another discussion that's not in this next three seconds. Let's just get some wording on this thing. And, you know, I'm happy with everything but that's thrown out here, but let's just get some final wording and let's move right along. I'm, the a new item number five that's been proposed looks great. The item, new item number four that's in print here looks great. What are we doing on number... Every, other than that, what are we doing on number one? How do we enforce the uh, reproductions on the artist? I mean, I would rather not charge the artist a fifty dollar. Because first of all, I don't care what California does when they charge fee. I could care less. I don't think we should charge the artist fifty dollars, but I think we should <coughs> make them if, if they want to enter the contest on the reproductions. It's their job. I don't think you should do it. Uh, the sponsoring organization should not do it. And for the artist to say, I'm not going to do it, and I don't think the department should do it just because we want to print I, here. If, it, you know, you as, as much as I would like to agree, if they want to donate the cash, that's... I, I agree that they should force them, but if you want to donate the cash or... I mean, you know, or not, then, I mean, they don't have to. They force them to, right? Don't give them the award, right? That's an option? Award to somebody else that's going to... Live up their responsibilities, or no one pick a first and second place, and that's for them to de deal with. Is that fair? As far as that, making sure we get seventy-five prints. Should be up to the nonprofit organization. Well, I mean to make sure that the winner, I mean the judges, pick a winner that's gonna fork over the seventy-five tags, right? Hey, fork over the 75 prints or you're done. That number too high, maybe lower down. 50, 23. Uh, Let's see. The prints aren't the expense. It's, I don't know. It's the color separation. It's, it's, it's the screening and, and the uh, color separation, as you indicated. Whether it's 50 or 75 prints doesn't make any difference. Tom might want to add to it because he was one of the judges. The winner has to post a bond for the printing. That's not a bad idea. Who is responsible? Would you be as the uh, or sponsor? Come back up here, Daryl. <laughs> Who would be responsible for making them do that? Us. Well, here again, I mean, basically, once we submit to you guys and get approval as the sponsoring our judge, yeah, the, the first thing that we do is pick, pick the species of duck that's going to be painted. We then get it the judging panel together <coughs> and and do the judging and in the past and we've changed this around because Reno used to do it now we have our Fallon chapter doing it because they meet in November they have their fundraiser dinner at November and we kind of use it as a little contest where we're, the public can go in and try to pick out what's one two and three we have 10 prints up there. Then we <coughs> notify who the winner was, so we kind of see who, what the next year duck stamp's going to look like. The artwork then comes back to the department, and the department takes it over from there. All right. We've got we to get, get moving on. I'm trying, I'm trying to find a way to get this moving on so we can get on to the rest of our agenda and yet get all this out. So, Ken... Let's see, we, we can bring this stuff up, any changes we have at the second reading. Can you get for me, within the next week or so, so we can get it posted way in advance, suggestions on this particular policy from the waterfowl? Yes, Whether, sir. Okay. You can get that to me. We'll get, it, we'll get that on the agenda for second reading. We'll throw that out there, some options. That way we're not just talking, hashing it out from now till the end of time here today. So if you can get that to us within a week, we'll get it on the agenda. It'll be in the second reading. A new four and five. And we'll have a new four and a new five. And anything else? Okay. okay. So we'll get that in there. We'll incorporate that under second reading as options. Okay. We're just, we're just talking it now, and we really need to get moved on. Um, number one, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? 
we got we got changes here. We got we got a couple options. We can leave it like it was. We can have these changes. We'll just leave those as our options. Well, why don't we see what? Uh, and then we'll see what they have to tell what us. What the group comes up with because I really like the work they're doing on the duck stamp judging. You know, and that was just came out of the committee uh, on the change of judges. But let's see what the. Uh, all right, maybe so you could tweak the judge numbers around a little bit and see what you come up with. It'll all be your fault now. Okay. Look, he's got broad shoulders. I like that. And tell, tell Tom that uh, those are not extremely lucrative because if it was so, we would have had all these prints done. All right. Let's have a break, and then we'll have item number 22.